All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is the final part of our nervous system unit. Uh, this is all about the synaptic gap, so how that message uh, comes from the end of one axon and how it gets across to the dendrite of another neuron. So pretty much in order to send a signal. Okay, so what happens at the other end? So it has to jump across that synapse. That synapse was the gap we were talking about between two neurons. So how does it do that? In order to bridge that gap, it uses uh, neurotransmitters. So they're chemicals released from vesicles. So we'll talk about exactly the step-by-step -step in a second. But just generally, it comes down the axon. It releases these uh, neurotransmitters, and that neurotransmitter binds to a receptor and starts the signal on the other side. So we have a little synaptic gap story that we're going to be dealing with in class. For now, we're just going to get into the bare essentials of what's happening. So the very first thing that has to happen is the action potential that we talked about last day, that nerve impulse, arrives at the end of the axon and depolarizes the membrane. And what that means is, as you can see, the sodium gates are opening, sodium's entering, sodium's entering. Once that sodium charge reaches the end of the axon, what's going to happen is it triggers calcium gates to open. And these calcium gates open and calcium diffu diffuses into the synaptic terminal. And it's only found at these terminals. Okay, So it's not found at the other gates throughout the, uh, the axon. So pause that and write that down. And what that calcium does is it causes these vesicles that are carrying the neurotransmitter to fuse with the presynaptic membrane. Presynapse is this side, postsynapse is this side. Okay, so you can pause that, write that down. And then what happens is once these fuse, it releases the neurotransmitters and across the gap and it releases it by a term that we talked about in unit one called exocytosis. And what's happening now is these neurotransmitters are making it from one side to the other. The way that it goes across that gap is by diffusion because there's more concentration here, less concentration there, so it'll diffuse across. Like this. Okay, so you can see that they're slowly starting to work its way over. What happens when it gets to the other side? It binds with receptors. I'm going to go back to the other picture. These neurotransmitters bind to receptors on this side here, which on the post connected membrane. And what that does is it stimulates an impulse to be started on the other side. So once that neurotransmitter starts, it causes that sodium gate to be opened on the new dendrite, and it starts that cascading effect again of the impulse traveling down. Okay, So just get the words down for now, we can worry about the visuals later. So how does it actually get broken down? So these neurotransmitters that are sitting in that synapse now need to be broken down either by enzymes like we were talking about before, so acetylcholine uh, could be broken down by acetylcholine esterase, or it could be reabsorbed back into the presynaptic membrane. So there's two kind of main ways that they get carried out of the uh, synapse besides that they bind to the receptors of the uh, postsynaptic gap. We have a gap wrap. We're going to show you that tomorrow, so make sure that I do. And then here's just a visual step-by-step. -step. Uh, feel free if you want to draw this picture, you can. Otherwise, we're going to be doing some work with it tomorrow. So action potential arrives here positively stimulates the calcium channels to open. Calcium comes rushing in, binds to these synaptic ves vesicles, which carry the neurotransmitter, signals to the neurotransmitter, or the vesicles to be able to bind and exotisotically, I totally made that word up, through exotisocytosis, release these neurotransmitters, diffuses across the gap, binds with the receptor molecule, which stimulates the action potential to begin again in the next neuron. Okay, so it's basically this is the way that neurons talk to each other. And we already talked about these, but here are some examples. Acetylcholine stimulates skeletal muscle to, to work. Epinephrine and norepinephrine is going to inhibit or excite the flight or flight response. Dopamine, which is in the brain. This is all about sleep, mood, attention, and learning. And then we also have some serotonin, which is all about sleep. 
Okay, so hopefully that helps. And if you guys have questions, which I'm sure you will, we're going to be going over this in quite a bit of detail next day. Have yourselves a wonderful night.